In this A3 tutorial, I'm going to talk about complex numbers and the effect of inductance and capacitance. Now, from an electrical engineering point of view, it's pretty hard to talk about one without talking about the other. So, let's take it back a little bit to start off with. You will all be familiar with a simple circuit that has an applied voltage here, an AC voltage coming out through a purely resistive load like this. And again, we'll just stick some numbers in here. We'll call this load 5 ohms and we'll call this 230 volts. Now, you all know, Ohm's law tells us that the current here is the voltage over the impedance, which is 230 over 5, which gives us an impedance of 46 amps. We can look at this in the time domain. And in the time domain, we can show a voltage waveform here. Here's our AC voltage waveform. It has an RMS voltage of 235 and a peak voltage that will be root 2 times that. So here is our RMS 230 and our peak voltage will be 325. Our negative peak voltage will be minus 325. Now, in terms of magnitudes, we can represent these not only in the time domain, but also in the vector domain. So just here's our, here's our current here, which will have an RMS current, IRMS of 46 amps. We can also represent this in a, a vector domain where we use vectors and we use a real axis along here. So we could have a the magnitude of this voltage, which would be 230, and our impedance would be a purely resistive impedance here, and our current is here. So these are all laid over each other, so this is our 230 volts, our 46 amps, and our 5 ohms. Everything is nice and even and laid out. And instead of showing this in the time domain where we have time on the x-axis here, we are showing this as a force vector. When things come to using inductance and capacitance, things change a little bit. If we look at a circuit, our exact same circuit, but it's our circuit with not only does it have a 5 ohm resistance, but we'll arguably call, we'll put a, a value of inductance in here, and we'll just call it 6 millihenries, just to work the numbers. Now, our impedance of our circuit is no longer 5 ohms. Our impedance of our circuit is a combination of these two points here. And the impedance is R plus JXL, where XL is 2 pi FL. We've worked on 230, so it's fairly safe to say that this circuit will be 50 Hz. If we go through and calculate that for 50 Hz, we end up with an inductive reactance of 1.88 ohms. Over here now, we need to find our total impedance. So our total impedance is our resistance plus our inductive reactance, 1.88 now, we can't just add these two values together. And we can't add them together because of what's going on over here. Over here, we have our 5 ohms. Now, this is usually considered the real axis. There's a, I haven't mentioned it yet, but there is another axis up here, which is called the imaginary axis. Um, for electrical engineers, we tend to use I for current. So what happens is the mathematicians stick with I and electrical engineers, we tend to call it the J-axis, hence this term here. So the total impedance of the circuit is our 5 ohms of pure resistance plus our 1.88 ohms of inductive reactance. So our net impedance is actually this here. This is our impedance here. This 
is our, our R, this is our XL in this direction here. If we do a rectangular to polar conversion on this, and for those of you who don't know how to do that with a calculator, here is a, a, a Casio calculator. It's very easy. We find the polar button and we press it. We input the real component, which is 5, at the comma button. We input our reactive component, 1.88, close bracket, and equals. And that gives us the magnitude of our real component here which in this case is 5.34 and we can get the angle and we can get the angle by going recall the F button and that will tell us our angle 20 degrees over to here so we have if this is our 5 and our 1.88 it's telling us that our total impedance is 5.34 and this angle in here is 20 degrees. So this is our impedance. We can then calculate our current based on this impedance and as I've said our voltage is 230 volts and we're going to assume that that has a reference in the time domain of nothing. So to find our total current it is the voltage over the impedance which is 230 volts an angle of zero degrees over our impedance 5.34 at 20 degrees so our total current is that divided by that to do these we divide the real part so 230 divided by 5.34 which will give us an answer of 43.07 and we subtract the angles so it's divide the real subtract the angles. 0 minus 20 gives us an angle of minus 20 degrees. If we go to the time domain to plot this we see that here we have our voltage waveform. Our current waveform has now got an RMS magnitude of 43 but it lags by 20 degrees. So that's 90 degrees, that's 180 is 360 so it lags by 20 degrees it's probably down around here somewhere so we end up with a current waveform that's going to look a little bit like this here's our I waveform because it lags by 20 degrees due to the inductive reactive component of our inductor if we put this in the vector diagram we see that we still have our voltage waveform there and our current waveform this is our real, this is our J axis our current waveform lags by 20 degrees that's the way we go so this is to lag, by to be if this is going to rotate around this way to be behind by 20 degrees, out here is 45 so it's going to be around right about here somewhere so V equals 230 at 0, I equals 43 at minus 20 degrees. So the magnitude of that is our current, 43, and that angle there is 20 degrees. Our current is 43, it is lagging our voltage by 20 degrees, and this is what we see in the time domain. If you were to use an oscilloscope, that's what you'd see. This process works exactly the same for capacitive loads. So if we use a similar circuit, we come down here, again we've got our 230. Again we've got 5 ohms of pure resistance. And I just pick a capacitive value to do the math, and let's call it 600 microfarads. We go through the exact same process. Our impedance. Is R and our reactive component so for a capacitor it's minus capacitive reactants 1 over 2 pi FC at 50 Hertz 600 microfarads 2 times pi times 50 times 600 times 10 to the negative 6 
and that should give us a value of around about 5.3 ohms. We can therefore find out our total impedance, our pure resistance of 5 ohms, our reactive component, 5.3 ohms. Now, this is the thing where some students go wrong. They're used to dealing with inductance and using a plus. For capacitance, it needs to be a minus. And when they do their translation on their calculator, they often make a bit of a mistake. So let's do this. A polar transformation of 5, comma, minus 5.3. Minus 5.3. If you omit that negative sign, you'll get the right numerical answer but you won't have the proper angle in terms of the mag which direction it is, whether it's a leading or lagging angle over here. Close the bracket, and that gives us a 7.2. 7.2, well, 7.29, at an angle of, recall F, 46 degrees, minus, minus 46. Seven degrees. So this is the impedance of our circuit because of the capacitor at 50 Hz. We can therefore calculate current. Again we're assuming taking our voltage as having a zero volt reference over our impedance 7.29 minus 46.7 so our total current therefore resolves to be that divided by that, which gives us 31.59, 0 minus minus 46, which is effectively saying 0 plus 46 because the two negatives cancel out, 0 minus minus 46, 46.7. If we look at our load, we have our pure resistive load of 5, we have a inductive component down here of 5.3. On our triangle, here's our 7.29 at an angle of minus 46 degrees. We can again do our voltage and current in the time domain. Here we are here. Here's our voltage. 230 volts RMS. Our current we've calculated to have a magnitude of 31.59 RMS. And this current leads by 46 degrees. Here is 90. That would be lagging by 45 degrees there. We're going to lead it. We have to lead it. So our current is going to be like this. If you were to look at it on the oscilloscope, this is what you would see. You would see that the current in the time domain leads the voltage. If we were to plot this here in the vector domain, just like we did up here, once again we have our real axis here with our 230 volts, with an angle of zero, and our current we've calculated at 31, leading by an angle of 46, which will be up here. So these, this is how things look. Now, some students seem to get a little bit confused with leading and lagging, and the easiest way to remember that is simply with the word civil. In a capacitive circuit, the current leads the voltage. The voltage leads the current in an inductive circuit. Capacitive circuit, current leads voltage. In 
inductive circuit, voltage leads current. That's a nice easy thing to remember. Thanks for listening.